are live. We are live on Facebook. And so this today is the 15th of November. It is, it was Leonard's birthday in the physical body of Leonard D. Orr. And we are celebrating his birthday with what was most important to him, which was the idea of physical immortality. And we will do a lot of sharing and contemplation about his life's mission, which he considered his life's mission to teach spiritual purification, spiritual enlightenment, and uh, sp uh, in, in initiate spiritual communities. And uh, so I'm here. My name is Heike Strombach. I worked with Leonard Orr for 30 years, no, 28 years, <clears throat> his last eight, 28 years of his life and spend a lot of time with him. And I feel very blessed about this. And um, I am now continuing the work, teaching, rebirthing, breath work, as well as the ideas of physical immortality. And I'm here with Agata Janik. And I'm very happy. Um, she is uh, a rebirther and friend since many years. And we already did the German version of uh, this birthday celebration yesterday. And maybe I hand it over to you or um, anybody who likes to introduce themselves after you. And uh, yes, welcome everybody here. Welcome everybody on Facebook and live here. Agata. Yes, hello from my side. Uh, my name is Agata Janik. I am here in South of Germany located in near Munich and uh, yes uh, maybe a couple of words about, about myself uh, I met Leonard for the first time um, over 10 years ago and it was a very very important and uh, inspiration inspirational <laughs> uh, meeting so uh, Leonard was a very important person in my life now I I'm a rebirther. I work as a past life therapist, and I am. My focus is also on um, out of body experiences because these were part of my uh, personal growth. This was the way how rebirthing changed my life and how I grew, and I'm growing still. So this is a very important part of my life. And of course, the topic we have today: physical immortality is also um, quite important to me and uh, already yesterday we've been talking about it and it was like yeah what is why is it this idea so weird why can't we accept this idea why most of us uh, don't can't imagine or or don't even try to imagine this idea that we could uh, live forever yeah we that we don't really have to die and leave our body and come back again. So yeah, these are the topics that are very important to me. And yes, we want to discuss about it. I uh, would like to share also some of my uh, out of body experiences. And yeah, and we just, I think we would like to make this meeting interactive so that uh, anybody who wants to say something and share their experience should do it because it helps all us and it inspires all us. So I think that's a good idea. So um, yeah, I don't know if anybody else would like to say a little bit about uh, himself, herself, or shall we continue, Heike, what do you think? Well, um, yeah, anybody who would like to introduce themselves. <laughs> Come on, Frank, <laughs> say, say something. <laughs> Joanne, oh. okay. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Frank. Uh, okay, uh, my name is Frank uh, Lumen. I met Leonard Orr for the first time in uh, 2008 in Belgium in his nine-day training. Uh, after that, I did many, many trainings with Heike. And all of these trainings with Leonard Orr, organized by Heike, were just magical to me. Uh, to be honest, I still miss them. Uh, I miss Leonard a lot. Um, I don't know what else to say, but it changed my life, basically. And uh, I think rebirthing breathwork is one of the most, if not the most, um, 
uh, deep going uh, spiritual healing tool out there. And I'm forever grateful. I met Leonard, uh, met Heike, and other trainers in the field of, of breathwork and uh, just magical. Yeah, very grateful. Thank you. Yeah. Joanne? <laughs> Please, Please you're me. such a special. Okay, Joanne is a <laughs> wonderful friend. She um, she is a reverser also, but she she lives now on uh, on. Uh, uh, Oh. <laughs> Say it, please, <laughs> for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in an earth ship, that's what I was going to say. She is creating by her own hands. She is creating uh, houses and places to live. And I, maybe you like to say something about that. In Tasmania, she lives. That's what I was yeah. Oh yes, please tell us something more. It sounds interesting. I, <laughs> um, uh, what I'm actually building is a, a small retreat space, um, that, like that's based around the elements: earth, air, water, and fire. And I'm building them out of earth, so um, a firehouse, a bathhouse, and, and like a toilet area. So yeah, it's a big project, but it feels really important to make it out of earth. Um, because I feel like in the whole physical immortality game that we haven't actually been giving Earth its, um, the, its proper weight, really. Like, um, to me, the, the, like the true will of Earth, the planet Earth, is everlasting life. And so I see great value in um, joining with Earth in the process of physical immortality. Wonderful, yes. So what we did uh, yesterday in German, I think it was a good idea. We will structure our talk today around the three basic ideas or principles of physical immortality. And the first one is the philosophy. And that's also how Leonard made his talk. So we, we will talk first about the philosophy what do we have to think or what, what will inspire us to perceive the idea that there is a, a real ability, a real possibility for us to keep our body healthy? We have to conceptualize that first. And uh, we call that the philosophy. And we have many uh, books and, and teachers who are teaching this. And we will contemplate about those teachers. And then uh, the second part is the psychology. That means what would stop us actually to really want that? Like uh, Joanne also said, and uh, we, it's a gift of Mother Earth. And it's our, I think also it's our destiny. That's where we are going with, uh, with our, our spiritual evolution for humanity as the whole to master the physical universe in a way that um, including our physical body that is in harmony with the divine nature. And so when we look at those concepts and then we have to ask ourselves, why do, are we so eager to get out of the physical body? Why do we have so many programs to uh, to say life uh, sucks and or life is limited and I can't I can't stay healthy and alive. Where do these thoughts and feelings come from? And we will talk about the unconscious death urge, which uh, Freud termed as uh, in his writings, but Leonard picked it up and uh, that was really a big part of healing the people that we we encounter and ourselves and of course it was always a big part for Leonard to heal our death urge to heal our desire to destroy and including our destroying our physical body and then the third part is the physiology that means people can do different practices 
to accomplish actually or to practice this or to live this and so i'm happy for joanne sharing this because that is her practice in uh in accomplishing it or in living it or expressing it so this is what we will will do today in this meeting and uh, yes uh if anybody has a connection with Facebook right now and could check if there's any comments in there and write it in this, but otherwise um, we will we will just uh, answer or discuss it in this group. Okay, so um, let's start with the philosophy. And so why do we make the physical immortality day the day of Leonard's birthday? Um, because it was in his thinking, it was in his reality, it was more than thinking because till the last moment of his life, for him, death was a joke. So he, he, he considered this um, uh, not realizing our potential and he had that deep faith inside of him, that deep trust that he could get um, through and and master his physical body and that is his own personal story but the basic of our our life's philosophy uh will determine what we create so um we are we are creating our reality with our thoughts and so now we can look at the the details on stories that we have programmed already in our mind. And so Agatha, would you like to share anything about this? The philosophy? Yes, yes let's let's share our ideas and our uh, potentials. Um, well, for me, it is so important. Leonard was so important in my life because he was really the first person who introduced to me this idea of physical immortality. And the first time when he did it, when he told me, hey, you don't have to, you don't have to die, it's optional. Then I said, oh, uh, he's nuts, uh, <laughs> there's something wrong, it cannot be true, what is he talking about? Everybody's dying and he comes here and says, it's, uh, you don't have to die. So I said, okay. Um, uh, so first I, I didn't really take it seriously. But then, uh, and I just put it away, this idea. And then later uh, during my uh, sessions, my rebirthing sessions, I came to contact, I had uh, contacts to beings from other dimension. And that was the inspiration to me and also to uh, members of my family who passed away already. So then I started, it came back to me, the idea, and I started to contemplate it. And I said, well, um, I don't know why, but it came back and I started to think about it and think about it. And the more you think about something, the more you grow and the idea, you start to um, accept it, maybe not directly accept, but you think about it and it does something to you. That's how it was with me. And then I had, um, through my connection also through rebirthing to to babaji and uh, i read about him and then uh, of course i tried i started to to contemplate it and then i came okay it i started to accept this idea that it could be possible we don't have to die and then uh, later uh, through my evolution i just came to the point that it is really possible that this is we can do it. And there are so many um, proofs from different sides if we really want to look for it. But of course, as I say, the most difficult problem is that we all say the idea that we get or the first picture in my head was when I heard about physical immortality is why should I do it? Why, why shall I want it? when I get 100 or 200 years old or whatever, and I am old and sick and weak and exhausted, what life is it? Why, why do I want it? Or why am I supposed to want it? But of course, this idea is totally wrong, but it's not because 
it's not about being old and weak and sick, but it's about uh, re renewed. Um, how is the word? To yeah, to uh, recover and to get my body young again, which is of course possible. We just have to rejuvenate. That was the word. <laughs> And it's all about our thinking. It's about our mindset. When we have the right mindset, we are able to, to change our body because our thinking change everything. We can heal our body. And so the first point is the knowledge, the acceptance of this idea. And then we can go deeper and deeper and, and learn um, how to achieve it. And I think the most important uh, is also to know that it's not just that you can do it within one week or two weeks or three weeks. It's just a way of life. And those um, ascended masters who achieved it, it took them often their whole life. They came with the idea to the um, incarnation and then they lived it. And at the end they achieved it. Not all of them, but it's not the reason to say it's not possible because yes, for example, somebody says, yeah, but Leonard died. So it's not true. And this also right, uh, wrong thinking because Leonard was on his own journey. It was his part. And we don't know what was the plan, the agenda of his soul. So we cannot judge it and say uh, he didn't achieve it. So it's not possible. It, it would be really limited thinking. So for me, it's that, yeah, there are enough. There are so many people who have done it and they um, left us their um, writings, their ideas, their uh, memories. So it is possible if we want to seek for it, if we seek for it, we will find the right teacher. And it is also important to have a teacher, in my opinion, a teacher who is from um, higher dimension because we people here around, we all um, have our challenges, we all have our problems and we don't see uh, the situation maybe in the whole picture, but when we have contact to somebody who has already done it, this uh, master can guide us and that's what they do. And of course, one of them is Babaji. So this is, um, to me today, it is one of my most important goals I have for this incarnation. Maybe I brought it to this incarnation, I don't know. But this is now very important to me and I will do anything I can uh, to go as far as I can to reach this goal. Wonderful. Yes. Um, so Leonard was, uh, he always said the people that die, they teach us something. <clears throat> so um, that, of course, includes him. So we can look, we could look at his life, but we're not going to do that now to analyze it. So um we are, we are, they are telling us something that worked and that didn't work. And still we cannot judge it in, in any way and say, okay, why did he do that or that he did, yeah. he, he did make a mistake, <laughs> but it's still, um, I do experience and over the last years it's been getting stronger that Leonard still participates. And uh, I had a talk with Russian friends and rebirthers yesterday and uh, I do feel Leonard's presence in all that I do so uh, he is still that we are still his community in that way and I think that's one of my messages too always to we can access his wisdom and he 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 wants that I mean he's still connected with us and we don't know when he comes back to the physical planet or not um, but we can still um, communicate with him. And so what we talked about yesterday is also, and you said that, that the idea of physical immortality is not a materialistic, only materialistic idea. That means that um, without any connection to the higher intelligence or to the higher worlds, uh, just with our thinking, that we can actually master and and uh, and have power over our body, but that there is our higher connection, our higher self inside of us. We have to 
um, get that connected with the physical body. Our higher nature connected with higher worlds and higher beings to incorporate that into the physical body. So one of Leonard's sentences was, physical immortality is to incorporate the, the eternal spirit into the, the physical body. And yes. Rudolf, Rudolf Steiner calls it to connect the eye with the physical body. So he doesn't term the, uh, the word physical immortality, but he visualizes or sees in his, his, in his power to see the future, he sees that humanity will grow and expand in knowledge and wisdom. And if anybody would like to say something, then just um, there is a little thing for raising your hand and then you could just tip on it and then we know that you can, uh, we'll let you share. Okay, Agata. Yes, and I think the, the, the biggest challenge is, or one of the biggest challenges we have is of course, uh, that people say, well, I don't know anybody who did it. Do you know anybody who did it? Look around, you see people, we are all getting old and we die and sick. And you know, this is for me the biggest inspiration when I look around and see people getting old and I've been thinking much about it. Why do we get old? Why people get old? Why do we all go the same way, the same path? It doesn't matter. You look to Europe, you look to rich countries, you look to poor countries, all people die. So we have to know it's not about the money. Yeah? It's not about our uh, physical, physical possibilities, our, um, yeah, uh, materialistic way of life so it's something else so I was uh, thinking much about what is it and to me it is meanwhile very clear that these are our subconscious programs that are driving us that are running behind in uh, our life and they create our reality and as I said before I work as a past life regression therapist so I have many clients and I, of course, did for myself many, many sessions before I started to give it to other people. And I made, uh, I re um, realized on my own experience how many um, bad negative programs I've, I have uh, carried with myself and I had them in my life, which were not from this incarnation, but from the previous incarnations. We have had all so many lives and we had trauma, we had uh, experienced so, we've experienced so many negative things that influence us. I've, I've and this, this creates this shadow. This, these are, to me today, these are shadows, this um, suppressed programs, emotions, experiences that, um, don't allow us today to live freely because they run in background. They are our subconscious thoughts, emotions, which are over 80% per day. We think unconsciously, and that's how we create this reality over and over and over again without knowing it, without being aware of them. And that's why, of course, our cells cannot really um, rejuvenate very quickly with the time because we don't let them to do it through our thinking and through our thinking we create our reality so the uh, for me it was important to take a look at these subconscious programs and then I realized and healed a lot of them many of them of course I cannot say now I'm completely healed but I'm working on myself and I'm growing and that's what I also see uh, with my clients when I work with them, how they change. And when you see people change and can forgive themselves and can let go of their past, they then start to create new reality because they create a new life. They have new way of thinking and th they don't feel guilty anymore or they don't feel the shame they felt because of old patterns and old experiences. So this is 
in my opinion, also quite an important part to realize our subconscious programs and then transform them. This is right. Kind of important. Yes. So that's what we talk about uh, the, the psychology of physical immortality. I like to stay a little bit more here with uh, some inspirational books because um, people might wonder, you know, how besides our talks, you don't find that much on physical immortality. So that, but you do. There is more than you think on physical immortality. Alfredo is coming, great. Um, so there is a lot more that we realize. And one of the things, Leonard was always pointing out books and things to read for, for anybody because he was continuously reading. He always had a stack of books next to his bed and was reading and getting inspired by, um, by the beautiful writings. And one of his favorite writers is Annalise Skarin. And so she wrote quite a few books actually. And uh, this one here is called Ye Are Gods, because in the Bible, that's a quote that um, in the Psalms, but Jesus repeats it. And in the Psalms, it basically says, um, you were present at creation, ye gods, addressing the people, and, um, and you forgot basically that we were present at creation and that we had a power. And so Jesus repeats these words. So his message was, we are all equal in this game and we have a certain kind of power. And he said that if you follow me, you will even do greater things than I. Exactly, this is so such an important sentence because we had uh, in all the religions, we had uh, masters, we had uh, people who came on, uh, to show us the way. Of course, it was not wanted here on this uh, plane because uh, of course there are different forces that don't want us to get back our power, to get to be strong, to be uh, sovereign, to be just independent. So. Uh, that's why it was, uh, of course, in many situation manipulated, changed, lied to people. The the best the best example is Jesus, of course, for me because you know I grew up in a Catholic uh, belief in Poland where it was very important to, of course, to go to church and to yeah, to obey and to do everything they <laughs> tell us, and it was. But I always knew as a child uh, already that it's wrong what they say. We, we are not the sinners. Yeah? And Jesus didn't come here to die for us. It, I couldn't believe it. I never believed it because I knew deep in my heart that we are all children of God. We are all equal. We are all love. That God had only one son and the rest of us, who are we then? don't we are we not children of god so it was to me uh, i couldn't believe it and that's why i started to seek uh, in my young age so and yeah and later i realized that jesus jesus message was quite a different one jesus came here to teach us to show us that we are divine beings that we have all the power within us and that we have to, uh, not we have to, but we can, if we want to, change our life and, and become the same as he was. He said that, you already said it, Heike, that we could do even more and the miracles he did. Today, we know from the quantum physics that there is no matter, everything is energy. And that uh, what he did changing um, water to wine or healing other people. It was exactly what he wanted us to know. And today we get um, better technologies uh, to understand it. We have um, scientists who say today already that everything is energy that we can uh, through our thinking manipulate uh, energy we can create from our thoughts and so on this is this is exactly what he wanted to teach us and of course to reach the physical immortality which he also did and showed us 
So that was his message and not to come here and to die for us so that we feel guilty all the time through thousands of years. And when we feel guilty, then we give our power away, then we are weak, and then we get old and die. That's the circle. <laughs> right. I, I need to turn this off. Uh, I put it in the other, no, I put it on uh, the pillow. Um, yes, and I wanted to point out, like I said, uh, um, I, I would just like to read uh, the content of this book, Ye Are Gods, because it is actually what we are talking about. Uh, and so uh, the first chapter in Annalise Garin's book is how real is our, our realities? And that's what you said, that it's all energy and how, how matter is not just a dense, unchangeable uh, something, but it is energy in motion and that including our physical body and what do we do with that energy? Energy um, becomes what it thinks about was Leonard's main sentence. He signed his emails with it. Energy becomes what it thinks about. So how real are these realities? So if we suffer and we have a difficult life, it doesn't mean that that has to be real forever. We might experience that temporarily, but we don't have to stay with it. And so the next uh, chapter is have, have you a soul? So that means, you know, what is our, you said that you came in with a, your life into, to, with a mission. So what does our soul's mission, our, our individual, individual um, uh, spark of divine consciousness, what do we want to accomplish here on this planet? And then man, know thy place. It's the third chapter. So she writes very, very uh, powerful and, and in this old language. So man, know thy place. That means... I mean, Rizzi wrote a book like, you are light beings. So there is many books that we can uh, read to inspire us. We are light beings. We are creators of our lives. We are created in the image of God. And why would we create all that kind of suffering? And so the next chapter is, is faith a word or a power? <laughs> so, if I have faith, uh, is it just a concept, you know, I believe in, in Jesus Christ who saves me from everything, or is it a power that says I have the power in my word that I can use to create health, happiness, abundance, beauty, everything around me and inside of me? And but so also the opposite, sorry, <laughs> also the opposite. <laughs> Absolutely. So then the power of vision is the next. So that's what we are doing here. That's what was great in, in all Leonard's works. He had that vision and he was transmitting that vision of uh, a humanity that is living peaceful, that masters money, that masters the physical body, that masters relationship, and that masters our direct connection with the divine. And then the pathway of glory, and uh, I'm not reading through all of it, but the atomic power of the soul. So, I mean, these books are just fantastic. And Leonard always had them next to his bed because, you know, if you, in the evening, if we read books like that, and then we go to sleep with these kinds of thoughts, we have a different experience in our sleep. And uh, I finish with this one, the next one, but it's not the, the end of the book, how thoughts are planted and how they produce. So Annalise Garin and all masters, that includes Rudolf Steiner, who, who firstly, we have to develop ourselves. And maybe we could go to the second point now, and you started already with many different uh, good ideas about this how we actually create and what do we have to do undo of our creation that means our shadow yes yeah that's the most important thing uh, when we want to change something 
first we have to have the will to do it. We have to really be aware that it's necessary to take the responsibility back for our lives, that we are not the victims of our circumstances. This is the biggest mistake we think, and we see it even with our actual situa situation with the virus and the vaccination and all this stuff, what is going on now, we have really here a great platform to realize it, that it's we are not supposed to react to the situation, but that we can create our own mindset and behave that way. So when I take back the responsibility for my life, for in this life, then I don't feel like a victim. As long as I feel like a victim, I will suffer. Of course, suffer is also addiction. It is like drug addiction, like alcohol addiction. People don't want to see it, but they, it gives them the kick and they want it back and back uh, again and again, which is, which is okay. We are not supposed to judge it because everyone who's here has the free will to live whatever we want to live, however we want to live. But if I want to change something in my life, and this is, I'm speaking now from my own experience, I have to, uh, I have to look at my life. I have to look at my subconscious programs, which drive me, which create my life. And of course, if it's not so easy from our daily, um, sub, from our daily consciousness, because these programs are subconscious. So I have to find a way to get access to my subconscious programs. And there are also different ways how I can do it. The way I do it and I've done it is through uh, past life regression and rebirthing, of course, because rebirthing is part of my sessions, which are very, which is very important because first we have to get access to our soul and we will not get access to our soul from our normal, um, consciousness because we have to go deeper and rebirthing is the one of the best tools if not the best tool to get access to go on a different level of consciousness and then our soul shows us everything there is nothing that is hidden if we want to look at it we have to go to our cellar and take a look at our shadows at our at those subconscious programs which we suppressed those old uh, experiences and those old patterns which we created like guilt shame luck it's all down there in our subconscious mind and as long as we don't look at it it will still create but when we look as, as soon as we start looking there we will change it we transform these programs we heal ourselves on the spiritual level on our soul level and that helps us to change our thinking because when i stop being a victim and make responsible others outside for my life and for everything that happens in my life then i of course get back my power and when i get back my power i get stronger i vibrate higher i have different consciousness and that helps me to change my thinking. And it, it's, all, it's all about our thinking. And then I have the possibility to heal myself also on the physical level. And then I am able to rejuvenate my body, my cells, and to live longer and happier. So this is my philosophy. This is what I think. Of course, there are uh, different points. We will talk about it later, like um, food, our daily lifestyle thank you yes so um how easy is it and that is a question probably for many people to change all those programs and you you were sharing about your own uh experience so i've worked as in a nursing home i was a nurse specialized for geriatric care so i was holding hands with dying people and that's what is such a big reality and such a big power for everybody and so um so strong 
that we don't even, most people don't even consider that option that we would have that power. So that's why we need those, those, um, those strong philosophies because it, we have to overcome. And that's one of the main saying she says, we have to overcome, to overcome to get into the glory of God. And what we have to overcome is everything that we are living right now, basically in the materialistic world, because it tells us, like you say, we are the victim and Leonard called that the death urge. Like uh, that fear that is vibrating right now and people are afraid of each other and afraid for their survival and afraid of course for their, uh, financial survival was everything that is created with this fear and we are only controllable through that fear exactly and, and the desert and so i talked yesterday about the 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 cd and it's called fight or flight the fight for immortality or something leonard was showing that uh, often in the trainings and they have studies how people change their behavior when their death urge is triggered. How we change when we get into our survival mode, into our fear, and how our social relationships change. And so they put people in, in, a, in, a, in a separate space and they gave them different messages and then they would react to, according to these messages, including, uh, seemingly t torturing other people who had the, a different opinion. <laughs> mm. And it was, and they were all students of psychology. And so it was uh, scary how these people changed and how much violence they were willing to enforce on the victims because their own death urge was triggered. Yeah, and that shows and that shows that all of us has this potential to be brutal, to be aggressive, because we have already done it all. It is also so important to realize we've had thousands of lives before, and everybody has already done everything. We've done, we've been the uh, not only the victim, but also the one who does the bad things to anybody uh, else. And so we, we are both sides. We carry all the experiences within us. And you see how quick when they are triggered, they can get access to it. Yeah. So, so it's all um, safe, collected in our soul. And now the question is, do I need it now? When we evolve and we grow, we know we've done it all. We don't have to judge ourselves for that. We should forgive ourselves. It was allowed to be because it belongs to the experience on this plane of existence. But when we, we have done it already, we don't need to repeat it anymore because we know the consequences of it. We know the karma, we know what happens. So it's enough, it's enough. And now it's time to look into the future, into the bright future, into a new future and collect new experiences. And the important part of it is to me to uh, conquer this physical body in the sense of um, changing the frequency to, to activate my brain, to activate my uh, light body and to become a being, lighter being more evolved. Yes, and so connecting to our heart and not just the brain is an essential part that what we are talking about that uh, cruelty and violence is not part of that vibration. We will just leave it behind. So exactly. we don't have to fight against the cruelty or um, the viciousness of humanity. We just have to evolve out of it we are leaving it behind. And that is the good news for me. I mean, that's the hope that makes life interesting. You know, if uh, I listen to some of my family members who say, well, people will always be cruel and people will always violate each other. I mean, what kind of energy is that that I have in my mind that I, um, I'm, I'm expecting? I'm expecting this kind of 
threat and death all around and uh and it takes my hope away it takes my love away it takes my appreciation for nature and for for the human nature also away so when we talk about we are gods it means we are strengthening our appreciation for the human nature yes we've all done everything and we have uh, we have meanness or options for meanness inside of ourselves but we can overcome that and we can transform that yes it's just no more necessary it's just not necessary anymore we've done it it belongs to the to the part of the experience and we don't have to repeat it and if somebody repeats it then this this person didn't realize it yet and needs more and more of this experience the same experience people repeat their experiences over through incarnations and over incarnations and do the same thing until they wake up one day and say okay now it's enough it's the same like with the drug addict or the alcohol addict the people you cannot heal somebody who is uh, has an addict he has to have enough and say from from within now I have enough and then they don't do it anymore and it's the same with everything so it's also not the point to judge those people and say you're a bad person because you are uh, you take drugs or you drink alcohol or whatever it's not very wise to criticize these people just allow them allow them to make their experience and when they are finished they are finished when they are done they are done and then they move to the next step of their experience so the next level so it's the same like with uh, all those people who attract we speak about violence and people who sexual uh, all these bad things uh, uh, yeah abuse but it's also it resonates who resonates to each other we have the experience you will never get the experience to which you don't resonate so it's within you it's part of your shadow so maybe it's better to take a look at it and don't experience it in your outside world but to heal it within you and it's the same with the actual situation with the virus i mean not everybody gets it and if you get it and i got it in april so somehow i resonated to this topic yeah so this is the way how it is and i cannot blame somebody else that he uh, gave me the virus because it's stupid i was open to it i resonated and i got it and it's my responsibility and if you are um, on a different level you will not attract this stuff it's the same with everything with every disease so it's always my own responsibility when i get something and it also helped you now <clears throat> to create antibodies so you know yeah. you transformed it and uh, you go through it and uh, and you are more fit for the the vibration of this planet so that that can also be very helpful exactly we don't know for what it was good i was i was never afraid of it i i lived my normal life okay and i got it and they, it was to me for me it was like a normal flu okay it took me a week and i was uh, exhausted and you know all the symptoms you have when you get a flu but then it's over so i changed also i it changed my dna it's uh, made my immune system stronger so it also has positive sides and that's how i see it it was an experience i attracted it into my life so i have to take the responsibility of it and i will not blame anybody else that did it to me it would be just ridiculous well there there certainly is people that um have stronger reactions but uh we uh we can only encourage everybody to strengthen their immune system to strengthen their philosophy and and their will to live to uh to overcome those challenges and we don't hear very much about strengthening our immune system and strengthening our our connection to the to the essence and to the divine i mean in the news you don't hear anything about that <laughs> Exactly. And I mean, yeah. how ridiculous is that? You know, what would you do to overcome a disease? Uh, what could you really creatively do and, and good for your body, healthy? But instead, there's only one solution, and that's uh, injecting some, some other 
toxins. So it's 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 ridiculous. And so um, coming back to the healing, so the healing, like you say, we have to go very deep. It is not a superficial thing. It's not something we do in a weekend. Leonard used to say it might take us 50 or 100 years. So he was encouraging us. He said patience is the biggest uh, strength of a rebirth because we see clients and we see options and possibilities and we see it in ourselves. And how easily sometimes when our buttons get pushed, we fall back into behavior that, that is coming down from generations and how difficult sometimes it is to say no to those kind of behaviors or thoughts. And especially when we are tired, we, our mind just falls back into those grooves of, uh, of negativity and, uh, and depression and sadness and anger and whatever habit or strongest negative emotion is that we vibrate. So jealousy is one that I, I had to overcome all the time. And uh, so we all have two or three very strong emotions that negative emotions that we have to heal that we came with and that we want to heal and that we want to overcome and life will throw us opportunities to overcome these, these emotions and feelings. Yes, and, and we see as now on the global level what is being created and with which purpose this fear and the global fear in the marketplace, everything what is going on now, what we observe, if people are um, awakened and able to see it uh, really objective, objectively, then we see what is really going on with which power some forces create fear uh, in the world and we see when people get in this low frequency globally what happens then it will of course create such reality and this is very low frequency fear that makes people sick that makes people lonely uh, and that everything is getting narrow and narrow and people are afraid to go out shopping because yeah this this is this program is being created now and then we see which consequ consequences it, it has and will have for the future generations. When you observe the children, the little kids who are not allowed in the kindergarten to sing, who are not allowed to play together. So, I mean, what is the purpose of that? Uh, but right. okay, that's a different topic, but it also uh, takes a part in this in this well, global situation consciousness we have right it's part of the desert and Leonard said that if people want to die it doesn't matter if they die in a natural catastrophe if they create cancer or or whatever it just it just uh, expresses their desire unconsciously not consciously but conscious thinking is only uh, uh, in these 70,000 thoughts that we have every day, it's a small little part. And the rest, like you said, it's unconscious. So um, if we have that strong destructive urge inside of us through all our experience, Leonard calls them the biggies, through the birth trauma, uh, parental disapproval syndrome, past lives, the unconscious death urge, our thinking, school trauma, religious trauma, senility, so I'm just naming them, and then sexual abuse, <clears throat> the suppression of our feminine and our masculine side, um, the food abuse, and so this we can talk about when we talk about um, the practices. So then, um, uh, emotional energy pollution. Leonard talked a lot about emotional energy pollution, meaning that we are exchanging energy. In every meeting that I have, I am exchanging either life energy, life urge, or I'm, I'm getting uh, hit by a, a dose of death urge. So you might notice when you're meeting with people after the meeting, 
your vibration, your aura might have changed. And so it's very important to just observe that. So when you meet people who are vibrating that fear, you know, afterwards you might doubt yourself. Can I be healthy? Because everybody's talking about it. And so we have to watch out that we don't get drowned in that, um, in that, um, that destructiveness. And so that's why the philosophy is so important and to read about masters and the flying mystics that was one of Leonard's uh, special books it's quite an expensive book it costs 80 euros but it's the title is the flying mystics of Tibetan Buddhism and it's filled with with uh, with masters and the book is by Glenn M H M Mullen so Glenn H Mullen M U L L I N and we have to research. And that was Leonard's greatest research. He was always looking for immortal yogi masters because he felt they are his friends. And when he keeps looking for the immortal yogi masters, and that of course included, uh, first of all, Babaji, but Babaji was above that for him. But he was looking for people, human beings that incarnated and reached a certain level of mastery and that can inspire us. Like we talked about before, and you said that Agatha, that we need a teacher and those people are available to us. So Leonard always felt that these masters are actually his te teachers and they, they support him. And so he went to, to Tibet, to India, to look for these immortal yogi masters. And that was his, his biggest joy. And so <clears throat> if we take the inspiration of Leonard's life, we can look at those things and, uh, and just being curious where to find and to open ourselves to the, like you say, that they can appear to us, that they can teach us. But they will only come if I have that desire. Exactly. If you resonate to it, if you want, this ha it has to be first, it has to be a strong desire within our heart. And I know from my experience and other people, uh, I know that when we look for a master, we find a master. Maybe it will not, it, the master will not appear in the way we expect him or her to appear, but it will appear in the way which is good for us, which will teach us. And you have in behind you a book, which is my favorite. Maybe you show it. Okay. Well, yeah, I will. Uh, Jay Sri okay. from India, she is the. Uh, uh, the creator of the creative school in India who teach children um, uh, to stay connected to their natural divinity in beautiful ways, uh, according to the mother and Sri Aurobindo and uh, Steiner and Leonard did a training there. So uh, Jay Sri is asking the title of the book again. And so the title is The Flying Mystics of Tibetan Buddhism. Can you see it? Only a part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is now. Now it's okay. Okay. Yes, and so uh, the the author of this book is uh, Glenn Mullin a, a M U L L I N. And so uh, let yourself be inspired, and that's the purpose of this meeting today. And uh, celebrating Leonard's birthday in the best way that we can. So, because it is like um, his mission has, I don't think, has changed. Because I feel his joy when we do that. And um, yes, the other book that we were talking about is the life and teachings of the masters of the Far East. It is translated into German, I think, right? Yes, I think it is. Yes, and so Bert Spalding had the privilege and the honor to travel in India through the mountains, through uh, the Himalayas with the masters uh, 
including Jesus as the ascended master and many other people who had abilities to materialize, dematerialize, to uh, go over long um, uh, uh, distances and, and powers to heal. Yes, and to appear in two places simultaneously and all this supernatural power, which to us is supernatural, but for them it's natural. <laughs> Right. And so he wrote these books about his m few months of traveling with the masters and uh, and the autobiography of a yogi from Yogananda is all about meeting people that have a certain uh, understanding, knowledge and practice and mastery over their physical body. And so we need inspiration. We have to come out of this limited belief that we are here in this weak body and, uh, and it has a certain program and I can only follow that program. But the mastery would include, you know, changing my hair into black color again, if I want to. So that, that will be very practical, beneficial outside visual experiences too. And so, but we have to at least have the concept that that is a possibility. And so we are all working on it and we are, we have to be honest about it. And we have to be scientific about it. And that was very important for Lana too, to be scientific. Is my practice actually working? Am I feeling happier? Am I feeling more alive? Uh, yesterday, I went with a friend, a trainee actually here in the house, we went through the forest and, you know, I don't use the normal paths, I just crash through the forest. And that is something that keeps me uh, alive. So it's, it's, do I trust my physical body? And I trust it as much as I trusted it 20, 30, 40 years ago. So it's a certain energy and trust in my physical system that uh, that I internalize. Yes, this is this is great what you said and I always say to, to myself and to others who I talk to that every journey begins with the first step. So it doesn't matter if we are now 20 years old, if we are 70 years old, if we have gray hair, if we are fat, if we are tiny, if we are skinny, it all doesn't matter because as long as we are here, as long as we work on ourselves, we can change everything. And even if we don't uh, reach the absolute goal that we ascend, we still uh, have done a lot of good work to ourselves, for ourselves and healed a lot of uh, um, old habits and transformed all the bad um, unconscious programs. So it's all worth it. Every rebirthing session, every meditation is worth it because it does change. They change us. So that's why it's really worth it. And we have such a great inspiration from those books and meetings and people we meet and, for, and mostly our own experiences on a spiritual level our mystical experiences which we uh, have uh, in our rebirthing session so i don't need anybody else in the outside world to tell me that i can uh, become immortal because i know it within my heart and now it is my job to to go this way and of course it is a process it is a deep process it is not that i can do it within one year and i cannot uh, it's not good to to have a point in a time that I say, okay, in five years, I have to do it. Because if I don't do it, I get disappointed and I maybe stop working on myself. So just, just live, just be in the now and do. This is how I uh, think about it. And but we have so many people here in the group. Maybe somebody would like to say something. What yes, do and the, the next point that you started talking is also how do we practice it? in our daily life and um, you know, the practices Leonard called them the spiritual purification practices with earth, air, water, and fire. fire. And how, um, uh, how, how we can actually live this idea 
with our day-to-day uh, -day, uh, pleasures and habits. And yes, maybe we could do a round of sharing on this so that how how do you live with the philosophy with the how much you're healing as well as the practices that might help you to to stay alive and what does the philosophy mean to you maybe everybody says something is it realistic for me or is it just crazy it's weird i don't think it's possible maybe we make a little round and everybody says How do you think uh, about this idea of physical immortality? It would be maybe interesting to hear other opinions. <laughs> Who would like to go? Frank? Yes. Yes, can you hear me? Go ahead. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, we can hear you. Yeah, so it's so relatable uh, uh, what you talk about, Heike, and Aga is it Agatha or Agatha? What is it? Agatha. I got that. Okay. So uh, when I first encountered this subject matter, thanks to Leonard and the trainings, I thought it was completely ridiculous, right? I thought it was completely insane. And uh, however, I uh, had a period where I was uh, trained by Baba IT through channeling. And uh, that made me open my heart, well, especially my mind for the teachings of, of Leonard. Uh, and um, Uh, now I really, I'm really open to it. There's still a voice in me, a little voice that says, come on, Frank, don't be ridiculous. You know, how is it possible? Look around. Uh, I lost many people the last two, three years, uh, very important people, including Leonard. Uh, so I thought, okay, if, if my most important teacher is dying himself, how is that possible? But just before he died, uh, a few weeks before that, Baba Chi told me, follow Uh, the teaching and not the teacher so that's exactly what what Heike said and um, I am now uh, so much more open to it and I also believe uh, well it's not my but it has become my belief but it was a teaching from Baba Chi that I received and Heike talked about it and you too uh, Agatha it's about your relationship with God actually and the story of Jesus Christ that uh, Agatha you talked about that he was killed on the cross And it has so much to do with guilt. You know, he exclaimed at the cross, oh my God, why did you forsaken me? In other words, why did you leave me, God, your only son? And I do believe now, thanks to the trainings with Baba Ji, that all of us believe this, what Jesus believed at the cross, that God somehow left us alone in this hell of a life. And that this is actually uh, the main cause of our um, drive to kill ourselves. Heike was talking about uh, self-sabotage, uh, self-destruction. I have lots of self-sabotage and self-destruction. Head. 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 Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so now, uh, now no longer. Thank you. That's actually really good because now I keep repeating my own old uh, truths. Thank you. And so I do believe that uh, the 15 or first five Uh, uh, bickies of human trauma became eight, then 15 or something, and you can go on and on and on. But for me, there's only uh, one uh, umbrella for these 15 uh, human bickies of human trauma. That is our belief in the following. I am separated from God. In other words, oh my God, why did you forsaken me too? And because of all this, I'm telling nothing new. It's all explained in the Course in Miracles, for example. And I do believe that, um, that what we're actually trying to do is kill God. But God cannot be killed, right? Try killing God. Uh, good luck. So what we are trying to do is kill ourselves. So God dies with us. And it's all about this for me now. It has become all about uh, to heal for myself my relationship with God, in fact, my belief about him and her. And, and that's for me the key. Of course, it's, it's different for everyone else, but that's what I'm, I have been taught by Baba Ji uh, directly, and I'm working on this right now by forgiving myself for my belief in separation. So the homework that I got from him was this. Dear Frank, that's me, stand in front of the mirror every morning 
afternoon and evening and repeat the following uh, affirmations. I will make it very short. Uh, threefold. One, I, Frank, now fully forgive myself for believing that I am separated from God. Two, I, Frank, now fully forgive myself that I hold on to that belief for such a long time. Three, I, Frank, I'm already one with God. God loves me eternally. And if I do this, if I do it, well, you understand how it works. It's all about changing your belief and separation. And then you reach that state, what Heiko was talking about in Agatha, that we are, in fact, defined beings. And, and that's something I never experienced. Okay, sometimes in, in rebirthing sessions, obviously, but most of the time, I do not experience that I am God, right? Most of the time, I'm just Frank with my uh, bald head and whatever I am or have. And that's it. I identify myself so much with a human being. And I need to simply learn that I am not my body, not my mind. And that's not that easy because, you know, you live your life through your five or six, what is it, senses. And that's it, basically. But that's not it at all. So my goal is now to reach a state where I can feel God embodied in my body. That's also what Heiko was talking about in the beginning in Agatha. That's really uh, uh, the key point for me. That's it. Wonderful. Yes, and I, I just, with each one of the sharings, you know, you're sharing about practices that you do. And Leonard was very right. big into affirmations, meaning yeah. making statements that, that, uh, prove or that state our aliveness and our our divine nature and to keep repeating this to transform old life uh, opposing beliefs and so the work with affirmations so in all the trainings we are reading the affirmations for physical immortality and aliveness and when we do that in a group we feel how the that spiritual community that how we can uplift each other if we vibrate those thoughts and so the practices with reversing breath work is as we know the key uh, depths Ex the experience that we can work on all levels we work on this physical we work on the life body we work on the emotional body and we also connect with the higher self that's why it's so powerful and we can use affirmations um, to strengthen that thank you frank anything else great jay Sri would like to say something I already introduced her a little bit. She's been doing wonderful work. And I had the privilege of uh, teaching some of her young adults between 15 and 18 years of age in her school who all had 10 sessions and are giving each other sessions. So Jayshree is actually on the physical level, uh, living physical immortality, even so she might not call it that way, but she is living real divine connection. Okay, Jayshree. Okay. Thank you, Haika. I actually uh, was going to more learn rather than share. So um, when I listened to both of you, for sure, I believe in it because I know there are many saints in India. I've read about them who have, who live for 300 years and 400 years and definitely beyond the human average. And I, I had read about someone who did sun gazing and just taking energy from the sun uh, was one of the methods. And he went into, you know, several hundred years of age. And uh, for myself, um, See, when I'm in a retreat or I'm completely, uh, you know, uh, only taking care of myself, then I find my energy is very clear. I'm still learning to master keeping that same level of energy when I'm engaged in my work at school. Um, and I found in my journey, the more I dissolve my ego, the more effortless my work is. And our work has never grown through ambition. I mean, we've never said, you know, we'll achieve this or it's sort of just grown organically. And uh, so that has helped. But I, I, I'm still learning to master the physical energy I have 
sometimes it's quite quite intense the work so um that's something that uh, i'm very regular with fire and uh, and chanting and fire and affirmations are just very much an everyday thing i do some amount of breathing but yeah i'm i'm just sort of uh, you know one thing i was wondering about is is it possible to achieve a higher level of you know that uh, uh, like what i usually feel in the retreat or you know the completely fresh and energized state while you're engaging with so many people because the school has many people and <laughs> so uh, that that was really because almost all the stories thank you for posting that book on by eva wong on the taoist immortal right. inside i i did buy the book and i was reading it and but it feels like most of them have withdrawn and have primarily worked on this and not really engaged in society so that is a curiosity question for me almost everyone withdraws and i know that when i withdraw from school this is what i'll be doing so in a way it gives me a new purpose i don't know how much uh, i I'm, i'm not yet ready to withdraw from school this still i know eventually i will but and i'm preparing you know a lot of things so that i can leave well but uh, yeah it's just a curiosity question do you know of anyone who's uh, done this while still engaging because i know lenard's always talked about how we have to engage in society and i know for sure i'm doing it but um when we do this other than teaching breath work see when you're when you're working with breath work or you know when you're receiving a session or giving a session that's different but when you have to engage with like say the government or you're engaging with maybe there's more eep <laughs> or with parents and you know children coming from different backgrounds and teachers of different backgrounds it's a little harder to sustain that level of energy right and, and i'm just sharing and, that's all it's not like i have all the answers but no but yeah. this is this is really important to share that with 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 uh, in this in this community because um and that was one of lenard's main contemplations and i do think he missed his time when it would have been time for him to say i'm out of society i'm out of teaching right now because he used to say there is no immortal teachers there's only immortal yogis um so but it doesn't mean that we um have to totally withdraw but finding that balance with interaction and with people and with our solitude or with our purely individual connection to the divine power and essence to refresh and become ourselves again because we can get lost in other people's uh energies and stories and then we forget it's so easy our mind to be cluttered with with stories and with details that that might not be in alignment with the essence and so lenard re- referred to this one yogi who who would only one day every week dedicate that one day to god so that means that there is one time a longer stretch of time where there is nothing else but me and god and that's part why we do the vision quest in all our training so we are sending people out my trainees are actually out today doing fire so that um they can be fresh tomorrow when we continue the training so it's and we should have that as part of our life that we um we notice scientifically how much retreat do i need how much do i need to detach myself from the environment and what do i need in this time when i'm withdrawing to myself and how much time that is everybody has to answer for themselves but you know it might be enough to do your meditation in the morning and in the evening if you don't have a very active life with with a lot of people or just uh, recovering at night uh in 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 your own space but like you when you have such a really active life to um to 
to notice the balance because when you don't take care of yourself how can you take care of other people it will it will be limited and you will you might deplete yourself so finding that balance we all have to make that decision and after leonard's passing i've had the the privilege to be able to have enough uh, financial background that I could just not work so much. So I've been working very little the last two years because Leonard kept always pointing out, you are burning yourself out. But when I was in his presence, he usually asked me to work a lot. So it was, <laughs> it was not that easy. So one time I came to the US and Leonard said, you should every second day take off. After three days, he said, well, I need to go on a four day retreat and please take over. So <laughs> six weeks later, <laughs> I had one day off in six weeks. So, um, so much for that proposal. But, you know, um, I was happy to support him. And as I said, I think Leonard should have 12 years ago had before his passing, you should have said, okay, I'm, I'm done with teaching for right now and I need to take care of myself. Okay. Um, uh, I have one hand up from Tenerife, Zilke, Zilke Modersan, a rebirther since many years. Um, would you like to share? Yes, I would like to share because it's so interesting, all the things you're sharing. So uh, I might start with the practices that I do to maintain my energy as I engage in, with, with people here, with uh, doing trainings and sessions. So I definitely need to take care of my energy. And well, I go each morning in the cold water, something I learned from Wim Hof, and uh, I do Ashtanga yoga, I do practices that really uh, raise my energy a lot in the morning. I also, well, I do affirmations, I do breathing, of course, and I'm a lot in nature. So that is very important. So for me, that is a very important part of maintaining my energy. This is I think the most important thing I can do for myself and for others. And uh, well, the last days I had some interesting things occurred uh, in relationship to the physical immortality. Because from, from many sides, all of a sudden, I heard people talking about it. I was, well, I'm joining also the Course in Miracles and I, I really love the teaching. And in the group we did, there was a, the teacher gave us like a, an audio from a recording from Ramta. And so I was searching in, in Ramta's audios and I found something about physical immortality. And there she said that uh, this is absolutely possible. If we could uh, get rid of our DNA, if we could, if you, we could heal or transform our DNA. And I found that interesting that in the last three days, I had so many um, people talking to me about physical immortality. So I thought that this is Leonard and Babaji <laughs> preparing me for today, <laughs> for my life. <laughs> yeah, so I really, I truly believe in it. If I make it or not, I don't think that's, the to that's the, really the thing. But um, I definitely yeah, want to try, give it a try. So that's from Tenerife. I'm here with a lot of works outside, so maybe you heard, hear something. So I just checked in. I, I saw this morning that you're doing this. And I will be in the afternoon also with the Spanish people. And maybe also check in on, on yours again. So love to be connected in that way. Wonderful. Thank you very much. 100 years, okay? <laughs> uh, wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, celebrating our 300th birthday together. Yes, I'll be there. Right. But I would like to give it to Agatha because uh, that is something I think she has a lot to share about also. 
Yeah, I think it's so fascinating that Silke said uh, about Ramtha because uh, I, Ramtha is my main spiritual teacher and I'm really very um, connected to him and I am really a very dedicated student to Ramtha and all the philosophy he has. And uh, Babaji is my second uh, teacher, but they are both actually working with me. But it was so nice to, uh, while you were talking about Ramtha, I could feel his energy. So I am sure he is with us together now, because it's one of his main teachings uh, also about um, physical immortality and ascension and much more. So, yeah, so it's just amazing that we are not alone, we are never alone, and our teachers are always with us and prepare us and guide us and help us to grow. So that's why I love it. And Ramtha is a very, really, really great, great ascended master. So if any one of you would like to learn more about him and his life, I can recommend to you his uh, classic book, which is called The White Book. That's the, the title, the white book. And there are, of course, many videos on YouTube and um, also other um, books that you can uh, buy. But for the beginning, when you never had contact with this ascended master, it's a great inspiration. So if anybody wants, just really um, take a look and see if you resonate to, to this master. He is a great, great spiritual teacher, one of the best we have. We have I, would, yeah. I would like you to maybe go a little bit deeper into about the the immortal gene and maybe you could we haven't talked i think today about that so maybe uh would you be willing to say something more about that well i mean this uh, meanwhile in uh, in the modern science it's nothing new the topic of physical immortality or from our biology that we have, all of us have the immortal gene. It is known, it's nothing new, it's not any witchcraft or whatever. And now there are many um, companies, also pharmaceutical and um, technologies that are working on this topic. And I think, I am sure that will be the future. So there will be companies that will offer possibilities and I'm sure they are already now to prolong it our life span in, in a different way maybe of course they don't uh, show these technologies yet but I think within the next five years uh, it will be available of course for those who, who can afford it we know we don't have it we don't have to buy any stuff uh, from somebody else to reach this goal because we have all the power within us but I am sure that this technology will be revealed. And there's also other technology. I don't know if anybody of you heard about the med beds, which are going to be also rolled out in the future. These are also um, special beds, uh, which work on the quantum level to um, rejuvenate and heal our physical body from any disease, from any disease, because they work on the DNA, they change the DNA. And yeah, this is also the future. It is also supposed to be rolled out in the next year. So there is much going on, but it's still hidden because it is not wanted in my eyes that the global consciousness that all the people um, will be introduced to this idea, but it will be the future. I am sure about it, yes. Yes, and the, the question is, is, is all this science based on materialistic, on controlling people, on, on uh, what is the purpose of it? Is it really lovingly, caringly used for humanity, no. which uh, we might not think of the pharmaceutical industry when they uh, produce so much stuff that is actually uh, uh, so many toxins distributed over the planet and in nature and uh, and in agriculture and uh, so much destruction going on. So we, we have to see in which hands will those powers be and what kind of creation do I want to do with it? So we have to watch out in which context it is used because um, 
the war of the immortals, you know, there is uh, Rama and Sita, and then there is the demons. And so they all have reached a certain level of power and mastery. And the question is, um, how is it used? Do I use it with love, with the philosophy of physical immortality that it's, um, it's union with God? Or is it um, that I want to control other people? So we can use everything destructively. And um, so, but it's, uh, it's good to, to, to be aware of it, that we have that power and how we can in ourselves transform that power. Yeah, that was, it's always the okay. choice. It is always the choice. I mean, we get all the possibilities, the same way, like with the vaccination now. Everybody has the choice to do it. And of course, people say, well, but if I don't do it, I lose my job. I cannot travel and so on. Okay, so you just have to make a decision for yourself what, what is more important to you and then make the decision and then don't blame yourself or others for their decision. And it's the same with all the new technologies. I mean, they are in the future, they want to implant a chip in our brain so that we can download information. We will have Google in our head, so we will not need any uh, mobile devices anymore. Everything will work like this. And it's already, they are already talking about it. So it's not hidden anymore. And uh, many people can't wait to get a chip in their head. Okay, so that's their choice. If they want to get controlled and want to be a slave from somebody else and pay a lot of money for it, well, do it. Yeah, it's we are here in this uh, on this earth to make experience, and everybody has the free will. And it's maybe also a test for you. What do you want? Do I want to have Google in my head, or do I want to be a free person, or do I want that somebody else controls my thoughts, my emotions? and uh, has power over me? Uh, that's the question. Right, so that's, uh, I mean, we, we have to, we are using the, con the, the idea of physical immortality always in the context of our divine nature, of, of our connection to God, to the essence, to the truth, and not as a way to control. So staying alive forever, if we are corrupt and if we are miserable people or if we are um, slaves, that somebody can push a button and we have a certain kind of emotion, um, it's, it's not, it, it might not be my goal to live in that kind of environment. Beverly, Beverly from Spain. <laughs> would like um, to say something. Hello. I, I'm trying to, hi, can you hear me? It's a bit difficult, but keep going. We will see. Uh, okay, because I'm driving. Okay, it, maybe it, stop the okay. car so to be safe and immortal. <laughs> <Good help. laughs> yeah, I, I can't right now because I'm on the motorway, but I would just like to, I, I'm so excited about this call today. And um, I'm, so, so grateful. I'm near to tears um, of having had the, um, the amazing opportunity to learn with Leonard. And um, I would also like to say that um, I was with you hiking nearly a month and a half ago uh, in Minorca. I'm going through a tunnel right now. Can you hear me? Yes, we can still hear you. Yes. Okay. So uh, I had the most amazing meeting with Heike um, just by chance. I heard that she was going to be on a neighbor island and I, I asked if I could go and meet her and we did and we had a wonderful day or half a day on the beach. And um, for me, when I returned home after only being maybe four or five hours in the presence of Heike, my energy was so high, it was just as though I had been with Leonard. And I'm so grateful, Heike, for having been there with you and for getting me back on track again into carrying on with physical immortality, which I've been involved with for over 25 years now, but because I was not weight 
track, but I was in the restaurant business with a vegan restaurant and raw food. And so my whole energy was, um, was involved there. But now to be inspired with you guys again, and um, Heike, since I got back from meeting you, my whole focus is back on track again of physical immortality with breath work, with fire, as much as I could possibly do. And um, my thanks to you for your dedication also. Um, I will be on the Spanish call this evening. Um, yeah, and um, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank My you. tears are of joy and um, and gratitude, absolutely. You know, because uh, this is this, well for me. It's 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 my life. It's how I want to be, and with the um, with the knowledge of the raw food that I'm doing, also uh, helps me to understand that to be able to have the raw food is making it easier. To understand about physical immortality because it's take the raw food is taking the vibration of the body onto other levels of consciousness as well so together with the breathing exercise and the oxygenating of the body also with the food is amazing so <laughs> thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you beverly yes and you've written a book about raw food and so you are very uh very inspirational on this too so um and i think yeah it was in regards to leonard's passing as we are celebrating his birthday today um everybody was yeah. like in yeah. in in a, in a sort of a sh shock not everybody but some people you know wow what do, do we do now and i mean that included me you know what do i do now you know how do i stand up in 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 the world and say physical immortality is real and everybody says oh well lana didn't make it and um there were very few real mean comments uh i was very relieved that you know it wasn't see good that he proved himself wrong or something like that but um Leonard was such an inspiration and he held such a big place for some of us and uh, and we have to fill that with each other. You know, I don't see that as just myself, but together with Sarah Dawn and Peace Arnold and us here, um, they will yeah. be leading the group tonight in English at 6 p.m. And then we have the Spanish group, like you said, at 8 with Irene Jovi Bauman and Amando Sanchez and lots of Spanish uh, rebirthers and people who are into it. So we, we there is a worldwide community of people that uh, go to the higher vibrations with these teachings and we um we just have to to unite in our in our power and and our belief and our and and give strength to each other and that spiritual community so i i don't see that myself because i feel like leonard is now putting his energy into many different people and they all have great ideas and uh and coming together we can um, we can spread the light together with him totally totally I, yeah totally okay. i totally resonate with that because because he told me to go to menorca to see you so that right. was the message i got you know and um and and my love and, and as love for the, his teachings is is amazing and for all of you and to understand how the importance of being with a rebirthing community um, is, is so great um, that I can see, um, you know, the people who are not connected to the rebirthing community or with fire or with the healing with water is very difficult for them to understand. So our teachings are so, so imperative that we get this out, especially with what's happening right now. And yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm connected with you all 
and I would love to be involved more with, now that I have more time, uh, more involved with the reversing community and, and get myself back on track again, because as I said, I've been totally dedicated to the food only for so many years that now I need to, I need to get back and get my, myself back into the discipline as what I was doing before, which I sort of put to one side for some time, but yeah. But thank, thank you. you. Oh, and, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Um, if Alfredo wants to say something, Alfredo also traveled with Leonard for many, many years and uh, and went to India and was uh, actually helping at Jayshree's school a lot to to bring rebirthing uh, there and uh, and keep working with the school. And uh, so welcome, Alfredo. Would you like to share anything about your life with Leonard or the main understanding or teaching that you have from him? Of course. And uh, so you know my uh, lifestyle with Leonard is still keeping, of course, and uh, but my thoughts uh, right now, what I'm thinking now, is uh, this time very difficult time. I think the problem is uh, about self-esteem. Self about what? Self-esteem. 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 Okay. Uh, is it maybe too too far away? No, no, it's so, good. Uh, yeah, self-esteem. Now we are. Yeah, now you. We can hear you. Okay. So, um, low self-esteem means also low level energy. So, people today have so low energy that uh, is a, a surrender to government. Uh, any any tricky people with a low self energy is a low self esteem, like our government around the world. No. Because people renew their divinity, they lost this consciousness. When you lost your energy, your own energy, you lost also your self esteem. It's true, uh, self-esteem come from uh, parental disapproval, basically. And, uh, and then also school. School is very another uh, source of the low self-esteem. And uh, when you act in, uh, with the low self-esteem, you need everything from this world and out of you. So you ask a doctor, you ask insurance, you ask for everything. And when you need everything out of yourself, you become addicted for everything. And who giving you service or like this can control you. Easy, because you don't have power. So also Babaji said, uh, we, people today have to arise the self-esteem because uh, to live in this world we need to have high self-esteem so uh, what we have to do is a uh, growing uh, our self-esteem uh, in which way i i think um, the way the learner taught taught us uh, is the best way, doing five, therefore, um, uh, practices plus man, uh, mind. So when you do this every day, our self is been growing automatically, slowly, slowly, but growing. And when you point, arise your uh, energy, your self esteem, you can see the level you are, and you can see the level other people they are. And you can see uh, the source of the problem. And then you... Oops, frozen. Alfredo, you're frozen. Or oh, everybody's frozen. 
Agatha, are you still there? Can you hear me? I can hear you, but everybody was everybody was frozen. So maybe I I was frozen. I don't know. <laughs> Probably you were frozen. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it wasn't everybody. <laughs> maybe it was me. Okay. Um, so I was saying, and we we have to do these practices to elevate our our uh, self esteem, and. Uh, about uh, um, uh, physical immortality, uh, my viewpoint, but that can be many, uh, many other viewpoints, of course, because uh, physical immortality is uh, not, not one idea, but many, many different ways to, to look at it. So, but for uh, um, practice way for the, today, I think, uh, uh, um, self-esteem high level energies is a basic uh, what I what I say I say we are here in this world with some goal so after we uh, realize our goal we can leave our body and take another body in future this is not a problem but the problem is don't become victim of the death what it means not become victim of the death. Uh, death is basically without energy. When we lost our energy, automatically we become victim of the death. If we ke keep our energy level, a higher level, death cannot kill us, but we can choose to leave our body consciously because after we reach up our goal, we can live. We maybe we don't have uh, more reason to stay here. So live body is not a, is not a surrender to death. Is a lost energy surrender to death? Because without energy, we cannot control our body, cannot control our life. But if we, if we have high level of energy, full of energy, we control. Uh, our life, our body, our mind, because we are living the, this world is a world of the mind, the famous Maya, Mahamaya. So Mahamaya is the mind. So we have to control completely our mind. So if we leave our body, we leave body as a winner, not as a loser, as Leonard did. Understand? Yes, wonderful. Yes, yes. And part of the, um, the high self-esteem is uh, to know that we are gods. You know, I, I have a different self-esteem. If I think I'm created in the image of God, if I'm the creator of my life, then if I think I, I, I'm a sinner, like Agatha was referring to also, you know, to be a sinner and filled with guilt, will not give us that high self-esteem. So yes, wonderful, Alfredo, thank you. Anything okay. else about your relationship with Leonard that you like to share? Oh, um, I always had, had a special relationship with him. Uh, for uh, I spent with him 20 years. And uh, we use a, um, relationship full time also where, when we are living in different continent. <laughs> so I think this connection never stop in some way because energy that never die. Right. Thank you very much. Welcome. Anybody else, because uh, we are nearly two hours and it's a really fun, beautiful meeting that we are having. Uh, is there anybody else who would like to share something before we finish? Because we do have another meeting at 6 p.m. and we have a Spanish meeting at 8 p.m. So we are celebrating Leonard's birthday to the fullest. And uh, so anybody else has something else that you would like to share?
about this. So just to recap about the practices, as we, we talked about, Leonard put them into categories and called them earth, air, water, and fire practices. Mm -hmm. And we've been talking about those practices. So earth is food and movement and, uh, and a career. Water is taking baths and drinking good water. And then also uh, the fire is just spending time in the presence of an open flame because the fire outside of us will help us to purify the fire inside. And then um, the air, of course, is the, the power of the breath, the bridge between the spirit and, and matter. And so we, um, we are using the breath to connect deeply and so then the the mind the fifth element that we are using our mind to raise our self-esteem to raise our 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 identification with who we truly are so who would like to share something at the end of our call yeah I feel like maybe i would like to say I think it's been really beautiful meeting and it was wonderful to see you all in the group and to share uh, your stories. Frank, what you said, it was beautiful and other people just, just wonderful, Alfredo, so I really enjoyed it. And yes, I would like to say from myself, thank you very much for this great community and Heike and me, we are having uh, Zoom meetings every month. So if anybody wants to stay connected, keep sharing and inspire each other, it would be wonderful to have you there. More details uh, we have uh, you or Heike on me. And yeah, I think it is great to have community like this and it is important to share our experiences. So if somebody would like to be in contact with me or would like to know more what I am doing, I show you shortly my internet site. This is like my name, uh, www.agatayanik.de. There you can contact me and we can um, share or whatever. And it's just wonderful to be here. And thank you, Heike, to you for creating this space and to, to invite me and to be a part of it. Just wonderful. So I say thank you very much. Thank you. And Agatha and I will have a, a special weekend where Agatha especially will share all her knowledge about uh, out of body experiences and how we can use us uh, reversing um, for astral travel as another word for it. And we uh, we go deeper into our connection with uh, with masters, with teachers. Joanne, maybe. I love hearing your wise words. Um, if you want, if you want, you don't have to, but if that is something. Uh, I, I want to say thank you for this meeting today as well. Um, it just, it's so yummy to listen to people talk about physical immortality and I really enjoy and love listening to people and all the different points of view, you know, where everyone comes from. It's just music. It's really, yeah, so thank you so much for organising this. I just think it's a perfect way to celebrate Lily's birthday. Right. Yes, that would make him the most happy if we are yeah, sharing yeah. in his name, his ideas. Yeah. And yes, yeah. so happy birthday, Leonard. Yeah. Happy hey. birthday. Happy Every birthday. birthday, I become a year younger. Okay, anybody else before we finish? Everybody's welcome for, okay. I thank everybody here and uh, it is my deep pleasure and privilege to, to bring people together and 
yeah beverly thanks us uh so i it's a it's a real pleasure because um that is using leonard's ideas and and energy and keep using it and keep being with it and uh so his life uh his life mission continues and i'm very happy that i can participate in that and with together with all of you um so uh thank you thank you leonard thank you everybody who was here thank you everybody who was on or is on facebook and we do have another meeting at 6 p.m and sarah dawn and peace virginia arnold will uh, be uh, the main host then tonight and many, many other guests there. Dan Brulé will be there and, uh, and many other people. And then the Spanish meeting at 8 p.m. to celebrate Leonard Orr's birthday. Thank you, everybody. And I will finish the meeting now. Om Namah Shivaya. Bole Babaki Day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Much about Thank you. Bye bye. Thank I you. should bye. say Om Namah Shivaya, the main highest thought that one of the highest thoughts that we can have. Keep it in mind during this day. That will be also great pleasure for Leonard. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. See you.